Let's, let's pray. Let new things happen to you. Let all that will be happening to you now be to God's glory. Glorify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are presenting ourselves unto you. Thanking you for all you have done for us. Appreciating you for all you have done for us. And we are praying and asking that, O oh God of oh heaven, you that have been so good to us, as we are starting this new month, it shall be wonderful. It shall be glorious. It shall not, we shall not remain the same. And new, new things will begin to happen in our lives, in our ministry, and in all that we lay our hands to do. And your name will be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Please may we rise on our feet as we worship God together this morning. We've come to the sanctuary of God this morning. We want to worship him with the whole of your heart. You want to say thank you, Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me, for saving me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, oh, of the Lord, and all He, he has done.
Days of my life, 
I'll be following. Oh Lord, even when it's easy, it's easy. I'll be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everyone that is here is very important. And because everyone is here and we are all very important, I want you to tell somebody near you, dear, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Because these are important people. These are people that we know are great. And they are wonderful people. So we thank God very much. But I need to say also that there are some people that God has placed in position over churches, over bodies of Christ. And as a result of that, it is important that we recognize them. And among us this morning is Pastor Patrick Michael and the wife is the PFN chairman of Kuje Area Council. Please, can we see, can we see him? Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. You are welcome. So also, want to introduce to us uh, 
I'm sure there's no title to hear. Uh, okay, Pastor Dr. Godwin Danladi is a church founder. Please, can we see you? Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. So also, we have Apostle Sunday Umai Anobi is current chairman, Kuali Area Council. Can we see you? Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. We have also Pastor Oku Joshua. He's a church founder and is here with us this day. Can we see you where you are? You're welcome, sir. So also we have Pastor Timitope Ulua Rotimi. He's a pastor uh, from uh, Kuje Area Council. Please, can we see you? Oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> we also have Reverend Sam Ugodo. He's a senior pastor. And let's see you where you are so that we recognize you and give honor. Thank you very much, sir. So also we have Dr. Benson Atuanya, At 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 I'm sorry, Chairman, PFN Central Ward. Can we see you, sir? Oh, you're welcome, sir. We also have Evangelist Timmy Laimi David. Please, thank you very much. We also have Pastor Kano, Kano, Kano. He's an administrator. Thank you very much, sir. We bless God for all these wonderful, wonderful people that have come to us today and have come to be part of this program. It is a prayer that the Lord who has brought us together this day, he will bless us, he will bless them, and he will enrich every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we will rise up together to sing from a program sheet on page two. Bringing your vessels, not a few. Are you looking for the fullness of blessing of the Lord in your heart and life today? Claim the promise of your Father. Come according to his word in the blessed old time way. Bring your empty earthen vessel clean through Jesus precious blood and in human consecration wait before the throne of God till the Holy Ghost shall fall like the cruise of oil unfailing in the grace forevermore and his love unchanging still and according to his promise with the Holy Ghost and power he with every vessel fill. He will fill your heart today to be overflowing. As the law commanded you, bring your vessel, not a few. He will fill your heart today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power.
province of your Father come according to his word in the blessed old time when there will be a hate to overcome to overflow it as the Lord commanded you bring your verses not a few here we be Jesus, precious Lord, come ye need the one and all. And in human consecration wait before the throne of God till the Holy Ghost shall fall. Here we be We now have the choir.
Dearly beloved, you cannot be in a better place than this, where you are prepared for effective ministry as clean vessels, breaking through the challenges of life and bringing also multitude into the kingdom. And thanks be to God, because we are before the word of God. And this morning, the Bible teacher and the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoyi, he has something to tell you. He has something to give you. So let us wait patiently as we listen to the man of God. the musicians and everyone that you are using here I pray you have made them for more they will go further they will go higher and they will go places they have never gone and you will use them for your glory in Jesus name Lord confirm your word even this morning transform all the bishops and the pastors and the workers that Lord they will go higher in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And you are going to say bigger amen. God bless you. You can sit down. When Moses was between the age of one and 40, and where he was, he thought, I've got something here. But God had something for him made for more. The next 40 years, he was at the back of the desert. And if you ask Moses, how do you enjoy your work? How do you enjoy what you're doing? He'll say, this is the best I have done. The first 40 years, the second 40 years. And he didn't realize it was made for more. Now, God called him at the burning bush and brought him back to Egypt when he saw that burning bush and these were the people of Israel, his own nation and the Lord was sending, forth, sending him forth as a deliverer when he came to uh, Pharaoh and Pharaoh said show me the sign he threw down the rod and became a serpent and Moses would have thought I've never seen this the greatest I've seen in my life but the Lord was saying, you are made for more. The rivers of Egypt were turned to blood. And Moses said, great day, great miracle. I've never seen this before. But God was saying, you are made for more. They got to the Red Sea eventually. And when he stretched the rod, the Red Sea parted in two. He said, now I've got the climax. This is the best I ever saw. Divide the Red Sea. And millions of people passed over. And God was saying, you are made for more. Then he came to the rock. And three million people wanted to drink water. Where are we going to get water? Look at the dry rock there. Stretch your rod and smite that rock. And water came out. The point I'm making is this. Every step. Every week, every month, every year, whatever good thing was done and whatever great miracle was done, God was still saying, Moses, there is still more. There is still more. That's the message I brought to you. That whatever God has used you to do, whichever ministry God has raised you up to do, a bishop, a pastor, a leader, an evangelist, whatever you have seen, from this day, you are made for more. Yeah. There is still more. What you never thought of, what you never dreamt of, there is still more. And this message for the day, I'm talking on more like our Redeemer in love and mastery. More like our Redeemer in love and in mastery. When Peter, James, John, Andrew, and all those uh, apostles of the Lord, when they saw him raise the dead, 
He said this in the Messiah. And yet the Lord was saying, you'll be like that. She also raised the dead. When they saw him healing the sick, they said, have you ever seen this before? No, we've never seen this. And God was saying, he wasn't there just to demonstrate. He wasn't there just to manifest. He was there to make them like himself. And everything we've seen Christ done, everything we've seen Christ proclaimed. The Lord said, I just didn't bring you here to see, only to look. He that believes in me, the works I do, he shall do. Amen. Amen. And more than this shall he do because I go to the Father. That's why we're here, so that you realize whatever good thing you've seen in the past, the better will come. And whatever great thing you've seen in the past, in your ministry, a greater thing is coming through you. And you will do it before you go to heaven, before you meet the Lord face to face. More like our Redeemer. More like our Maker. More like our Savior in love as well as in mastery. Look at First Thessalonians. We're looking at chapter 4. And it says in verse 1, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received us, how ye ought to how ye ought to walk. You have received of us, received from us, how ye ought to walk. And is God, so ye would abound more and more. Everybody say more and more. Paul the apostle said, you've received the force, you've heard the exhortation, you've heard the teaching now, you're doing it and you're doing well. I'm not coming here uh, to say that the work of God has not been going on, the work of God has been going on here for many years, and who knows, I don't know the history very well, but I know that for more than a century, the work of God has been going on. And Paul, the apostle, said, you've been doing it well. How you ought to walk, how you ought to please God. But he wanted them to understand they would abound more and more. Our coming together, our sharing together, our partnering together is so that the good work God has been doing, there will be more and more. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it tells us, it says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. Ye need not that I write unto you. And yet, he wrote to them. Think about that. Uh, Paul the apostle said, I know you. You know the Lord. You believe the Lord. You are in the Lord. And you're doing the work of God. In fact, I should face other territories. I should face other nations. You don't need that at your right unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God. Think about that. He said, what am I doing here? What am I writing to them? Why should I even say I want to teach them when they have been taught of God? To love one another. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in, in the in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. I don't need to write to you. I don't need to come to you. I don't need to say I want to come and minister here. But I see that two are better than one. I see that one will chase a thousand. But two combined together will chase ten thousand. Even though I don't need to come, yet I come. So that you will increase more and more. The reason I'm coming, the reason we're coming is a partner for the bishops and the great people of God here in this nation so that we've done good, we've done well, we've done marvelously well. Yet, we need to unite together so we can 
increase more and more. And as I come, I'm not going to take the uh, Filipinos to Nigeria. I'm not going to take the members of the churches to form, you know, uh, what we call deeper life church. It is so that you will increase in your ministry more and more. You will increase in your church more and more. That's why we're here. And if increase is your passion, if increase is your pursuit, if increase is what you know you are made for, we can walk together. I said we can walk together. That's why we're talking on more like our Redeemer in love and mastery. Normally I divide my message into one, two, three, and I'm going to divide this to one, two, and three. Look at number one. Number one is the redeeming love of the Savior for all men. For all men. Every time I see that in the Bible, for all men, I start with the first two letters. Me. Men. And before I can reach men, he has to reach me. And so when we say for all men, number one, for me. Number one, for you. And when he has reached you, it will empower you. It will strengthen you. And in the strength and the might and the power of the Lord from the me. Then bring back the end for all the nations and for nations. Then all men the love of the Savior of all men. Number two will be the reciprocal love of servants for such a master. The reciprocal love. Now, love is to traffic. It's not just one way. There are people that have the idea, love, do you love me? Yes, I do. And then they want, I said, don't go now. You ask me, do you love me? And I answered, yes. I must ask the question to you. You also, do you love me? It's reciprocal. Comes to you and from you comes to me. Comes from God to you and then goes from you to the rest of the world. The reciprocal love of servants for such a master. Such a master that will die for the rest, for the whole world. Such a master that will bring everything he had in heaven. He brought everything to share. And when he has shared with me and I've got the love of God, then I give back to him reciprocal love of the servants of God for the master. Look at number three. Number three, we'll be talking about our renewed love. Uh, you know, sometimes um, when we be together, I love you, you love me, I love you more, you love me more. And, and sometimes some things happen. Sometimes the clouds in heaven, in the sky, and the cloud descends and comes down. And sometimes the cloud can come between you and I. But love is not emotion. Love is will. Love is determination. When the mother gives back to a child, the love for the mother, for the child, is not all emotional. Yes, emotion is there, but the will. There's the determination. That's my child. The child might, you know, mess up somehow. And because of love, you look away from the mess, clean up the mess, and hold your child and smile at your child. Why? Because love is from the wheel. It's not just emotion. So we have the renewed love. If the emotional part of the love is, is a kind of waning, is going down, then you bring your will, you bring your mind, you bring your soul, and you bring your determination. I love him. I love Christ because he has saved me. And if the love is going down, or a renewed love, in full surrender and mastery, 
in full surrender. I must have explained that later. Let's come back to number one now. Number one, we're talking about the redeeming love of the Savior for me and for all men. It's a passage we know very well. Let's look at this in John chapter 3. We're reading from verse 16. In John chapter 3, verse 16, for God, hold on. What we're talking about, we're talking about the maker of earth and heaven. What we're talking about, we're talking about the eternal one. And you know, God is self-existence, existent. God is happy all by himself without a single man on earth. God is still happy. God is holy. God is mighty. God is powerful. God is faithful. And without anyone here on earth, God will still be God. And for him to create the world, love. For him to see that that world has gone astray and is still love. You think about God like that, he doesn't need me to be happy. And yet, he loves me. He doesn't need me to be a great God without me, without my being born in the world. He's still God, and yet such a God who doesn't need me or need anything from me still loves me. For God so loved the world, even if the world had no sin, God didn't need the world, really. Heaven will still be heaven. His habitation will still be his habitation. And yet, in spite of the fact that he doesn't do anything for me, anything from the world, this is voluntary. And this is because of his nature. For God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't just love the world and speak. He didn't just love the world and smile. He didn't just love the world and I'm pleased in them. He gave. Now, when you want to give, the people that give what they don't need. The people that give is an extra thing. I can deal without that. So I give. I can manage my life without that. Yet they give. But Christ, greater than all the angels, the master of angels in heaven, and the creator of the whole universe, and the Father and the Son had never been separated. Because I and my Father are one. And instead of sending angel Gabriel, angel Michael, or any other angel, is so loved, you can love. I love him. But you can so love. And you demonstrate that by giving the best of heaven. By giving the best that you have. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Yes? Only begotten son. Only begotten son. Abraham. That son, your only son, give unto me. And Abraham, if he gave that only son, where is Ishmael? Didn't even have the address of Ishmael. Ishmael had gone, not to return. The only one that remained, I see, God wanted to see the reciprocity, reciprocal love of Abraham. And Abraham took his only son. And God demonstrated that he put in Abraham his own nature. And God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, there are times when people give, they put condition. A rich man wants to give some thousands of your current millions of your currency, and then he specifies you distribute the money to this island, that island, that I about this one. No, they're not part of this deal. Only these people, even the great governments of the world, they give, they give to 
this country and this country, but this other country is not towing their line. Don't don't say to that area. Our our giving is limited to this. Look at God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, no limitation, no restriction, no constraint, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting love. That's the love of God that he manifested and his redeeming love. He tells us in verse 18. In verse 18 he said that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He manifested the love. He comes to you in and he says, come, the love is for you. He counts the other person, the other nation in and he says, come, the love is for you. With all the disobedience and with all the things in human things we do after that the love and the kindness of God our Savior toward man appeared. Yet the kindness of God appeared to us. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Not by the works of righteousness which we have done. Only ignorant people say, I've done some good works. Only ignorant or thinking people will say, Look at my good works. It's like an engineer, expert engineer, technocrat. He, he has all the knowledge. He can construct aeroplane. He can construct all these uh, technologies. And then a little baby comes and he, he brings a little stick of the broom and say, engineer, I have this. And to the child, that stick of broom, very good, very strong. That stick of broom, good. And can you fix that in here? And the engineer says, child, that one will not work here. How, how are we not babies? And God in heaven is believing now from the deadless past. Great. Greater than we can imagine. We don't have the adjective we can use for the greatness of the God of heaven. And then we bring a little stick of broom. Remember, he created the whole world out of nothing. He makes all the, all the uh, planets to be moving in their orbits and they do not collide. And we have millions and millions in the galaxies and he orchestrates everything. And then we bring, he's even orchestrating and controlling and directing all the angels of heaven. And he makes no mistake. And now we bring our, you know, this is my good work. What oh, good works do you have? I give food to the hungry. I hear you. I help somebody fed in the gutter the other day, and I helped him up. And we think that those good works, our righteousness, will fit into what the great God Creator is doing. And it's God says, "Child, now if somebody is a thousand years old." And you are 70 years old, you can say, boy, girl, child. If somebody is 10,000 years old, a million years old, even if you're 100, they'll say, child, that stick of broom will not fit into divine plan. And it's not just a million or trillion years old. It's from eternity to eternity. It's always been, and we creatures of time, all that kind of little, little, little pebbles we have will not fit into his requirement of righteousness. That's why it says, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's the only way to be saved. Everything was done. Every plant was planted. Everything was produced. Every fruit and every crop were raised. 
cannot save us. It says according to his mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's the love of God. And number one, we perceive that love. Then number two, we possess that love. Number three, we personalize that love. He loves all men and he has given us water in the ocean. The water in the ocean will not quench my thirst. We we'll have to make it personal. Get my cup out and do what I need to do. Personal. I believe that God loves me by giving Jesus yes for the world. But for me, personal, perceived, possessed. And when I possess that love, it's only then I go out and proclaim. I cannot proclaim what I don't have. If you don't have love in your little circle, love in your little heart, how do you think you're going to go out there and proclaim the love, personal, the love of God for me. Perceive the love of God for me. The preacher can preach a thousand sermons and you can be there until I wake up. That's for me. I perceive that. That's for me. And then I take it by faith. I possess. I cannot go out and proclaim until personal experience of the love, personal possession of that love, and the uh, understanding that now I have. Then I can go and tell other people. It's only then when you possess it yourself, and you feel it in your heart, and you know it in your soul, and the love of God turns you around to also love other people, now you can preach. Now you can proclaim. And now you can persuade other people that they too can have that love. In First John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 9 there. First John chapter 4 verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. In this was manifested. What's the, what's the word manifest? The word manifest is to, you have something in, in that bag. What do you have in that bag? I just tell you, I say, no, manifest it. Open it up. Open it up so I can see. And that's what the Lord has done. God in heaven has love. How do I know it? Has love. All the earth declare the glory of God. How do I see the love of God in the ocean, in the sun, in the sky, and in all his creation? No, he manifested it. He opened it up and he said, Jesus, it is the sending of Jesus to you and to me that he manifested toward us because that God sent, because that the manifestation, if Christ didn't come, the love of God might be infinite. You cannot count. You cannot measure. So deep, so high, so broad, and so long. Yet, without his manifesting that love, how would you know? He manifested that love in that God sent his only begotten son, into the world that we might live through him. He tells us in verse 10. In verse 10, he says, Herein is love. Herein is love. Not that we love God. We love God. Sometimes our teachers teaching our children will say, how many of you love God? And they all raised up their hands. What do those children know about love? When the mother smiles at them, they believe mother loves me. When the mother gives them something in the breakfast, mama 
loves me. But we cannot see God. We cannot perceive that. Look at him there. No, the children cannot see. And so we say, how many of you love God? They don't understand. They don't even understand their heart. They love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. But he loves us first. Not that we love him first, whether we're children or we're adults, whatever we've done. How does that show love? It is when Christ enters into my heart. And then he speaks to me. He's connected with me. And he shows me this is my love. After that now, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That means the taking of, the forgiving, the removal of our sin. When we have that experimental, experiential knowledge of the Lord, the sin was like a heavy load in your heart before. But now you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and all the sins that are taken away and you are free. And the habit you couldn't break by yourself before, that habit is broken. You're free. You're new. You're renewed. There's a new life. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. It is that experience that shows you, thank God, he loves me. And thank God, I now love him. And I pray that this experience of love will be personal. Amen. Amen. It will be done. I might have to get myself, instead of standing, kneeling more. I might have to get myself, letting other people do it. Just give them, give them everything you have. By the grace of God, I've been a teacher in the secular. I taught primary school. I taught secondary school, I taught high institutions, I taught university students mathematics, and everywhere I have taught, by the grace of God, in all humility, everything I knew, I passed on to them. I made first class in my own student days, and I've taught students, and they also made the same first class now. I come to the spiritual. And what God has helped me to do as a teacher, I will pass on to you. Yeah. And as, uh, as an evangelist, healing the sick, if we spend some time together, I will show you, I'll tell you how to do it, actually. I was in England, not in deeper life, in the assemblies of God invited me and I was staying in the house of the assistant pastor. Every night he would take me in his car to the meeting and he would watch how things were done. The sick were healed, miracles happened. They would go back to the house and he would sit me down and say, Pastor, how was that done? How was that done? I explained to him. Then we go back to the meeting the following day. We we'll spent five days. And on the fifth day, I didn't tell him in the house. I was saying, now, I've been teaching him and teaching him for five days. And that night, he introduced me. And that night, I preached. After the preaching, I said, this is the last night tonight. I'm not going to pray. I'm going to call on the assistant pastor, and he's going to pray for you. He looked at me one kind and said, how can you do this to me? You didn't tell me at home. I said, come on, come on. Don't let us talk in front of congregation. And then he got there, took the microphone. I was very near. 
And they now he wanted to pray the same old way and say, God, well, thank you tonight. We are coming to the end of the meeting. I went now, he pulled his jacket and said, No, don't do it like do it like I do it. And then he started it. And it was a process. And he said, Somebody there, you are sick, raise up your hand. That one, you are sick, raise up your hand. And he did, and he prayed for them. And I told him, don't say, if you are healed. I said, now that you are healed, where are you? Raise up your hand. And they raised up their hands. They started coming to the front to give testimony. I wasn't the one doing that. It was the assistant pastor. The pastor came to me after the service and said, what did you do to my assistant? He is my assistant. Now he's healing the sick and all this is happening. I said, it can happen to you too. And I came to tell you here, it can happen to you too. You will do it. You will do it. Let's rise up and raise up your hand. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for bringing us together. I pray, Lord, the love of God will be renewed in every heart. Refreshed in every heart. And I pray that the love of God will revitalize your people. Refresh your people in Jesus' name. We know you love everyone here. Lord, manifest more of that love to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, open up our heart with the key of the kingdom that we will reciprocate in the love that you have shown us and will show the love back to you and back to the church and back to the body of Christ in the land. Lord, unite us together. Unite us together. Unite us together. And multitudes will come to know the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. A big amen. You believe you can. You believe you have received. You believe the Lord has imparted something into you again this morning. A louder amen. God bless you. Let's be seated. This round two, I believe we are going higher. We are all going higher. We started on Friday and by the grace of God, rounding up tomorrow with number three dose. Get ready, get prepared, inform others, and let's all ensure that we come prepared. Bring your vessels, not a view. Let's come Prepare to receive everything God has for us in this program. Anointing for greater exploits for ministry. That's the theme, and that's what we are aiming at, and that's what God has prepared for us. So let's ensure we take the full package, number one, number two, number three, and by the grace of God, at the end of this program, God will take us higher. By the time we reach the end of the program, we will reach where God wants us to reach. Amen. We will not remain at the same level. We will not climb just a little, but we will get to the peak. We get to the height. If you believe that, shout it louder. Amen. 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 So please make sure you're here again tomorrow for the next, uh, the last session. And also, all our brethren connecting online and wherever you are connecting, please be there. Get connected in good time. We're to be connected as early as uh, 7.50. But begin to pray earlier than that time. And all of us at the Alpha location here, let's come here by 7.30 can start to pray, prepare ourselves so we can get the best from the Lord. And the Lord will shower us with fullness, the fullness of his blessings in Jesus' name. Again, this evening, we're having the crusade 
starting at 5. We usually, uh, normally, we start earlier than that time with prayers. So by uh, 4.30, please, let's be on the ground to begin to pray together. And then by 5 o'clock, we fly together and get all the fullness of the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. And the unchanging God of all possibilities, we work great, great wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. For all our uh, brethren that have just given their lives to Christ, please let's tell them, let's remind them. Three o'clock this afternoon, let them all be present here in this hall for lunch hour with Jesus. Please inform them. And if you are one of them, you are listening to me, make sure you are present three o'clock this afternoon for lunch hour with Jesus. And all of us ministers, pastors, leaders, please let's tell all the newcomers that we know about, invite them, remind them, and if necessary, help them to make it to this place at the appropriate time. Once again, we appreciate every one of us for being part of this program, and we are trusting the great God of heaven that your participation will bring the fullness of the blessing of God, the anointing of God, the power of God into your life. We'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. A big guy, amen. 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 Let's uh, just rise up and worship God together. Appreciate him for what the Lord has done. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Praise you the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you for what you have imparted to me. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Thank him, thank him, thank him for all he has done. Glorify his name. Magnify his name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's pray that the Lord will prepare us for the rest of the program and we'll receive the fullness of God's blessing. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Lord, fill me anew. Prepare me for the rest of this program. And use your servant, your anointed servant, to impart into me all I need to succeed in ministry. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for all you have done. We pray you prepare us for more. And we'll receive everything you prepare for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A louder amen. amen. This marks the end of the uh, program for this morning. We would like to see all the ministers of other churches at uh, the right-hand side here in front. while.
chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16. I'm reading there in verse 25. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 25. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Thanks be to our God, to him be all glory. In Psalm 48, Psalm 48, I'm reading there in verse 1. Psalm 48, I'm reading verse 1. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Psalm 145, I read there in verse 3. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Praise the Lord. The greatness of our God is unsearchable. And we are told in Revelation chapter 4, I read here in verse 11, all these are returning all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty unto our God for great, wonderful, glorious, and marvelous thing he has done among God. Revelation chapter 4 in verse 11. 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let me read chapter 5, verse 12 also. Chapter 5, verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. We will rise up on our feet, and we return all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, all the thanksgiving, all the power unto God, for he has been good and wonderful to all. Oh, he's a great God. He's a wonderful God. He's a God of God and Lord of Lords. Let's worship the Lord from the depth of our heart. Let's lift up our hearts unto God and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory and honor be to the name of the Lord. For the great, wonderful, glorious, marvelous, mighty things he has done since this program started on Thursday. And thanks be to God for the minister's conference that we had on Friday. Let's bless God for the blessings of the Lord that came on our life, that the Lord reigned on our life. Let's worship him. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him. Let's lift up his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, pray. Lift up the voices. Let's pray from our heart. Let's glorify God from our heart. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. His ways are fast passing, fasting out. No, the Lord is great and mighty. Let's bless God. Let's thank Him. We are grateful for all He has done for us, for the great and the wonderful things He has done for us. Let's bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is good, wonderful God, glorious God. Brethren, let's thank God for the gift of God to this church, for the gift of God to this generation and to the globe at this time. Let's thank God for the man of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, and how wonderfully the Lord has been using him. Oh, for the church of God, for the entire globe at this time, not only for Nigeria, not only for Africa, all over the world, all the continents of the world, the Lord has been using the man of God 
and the messages are going across and they are making great impact on the life of people. Let's thank God for such a wonderful gift the Lord has given unto us at this time. This is a great gift. This is God's gift. This is God's message to us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, let's worship God. Let's thank God for the man of God. Let's thank God for the vision the Lord has given unto him. This is a rare vision that the Lord has given unto him. GCK, it is wonderful. Oh, it is great. It is marvelous that all over the world, they can see, they can hear, they can understand. And through this, the Lord is bringing multitude into the kingdom of God. The mission of Christ coming to the world is being fulfilled. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Brethren, glorify God for being in a church like this, for being in a congregation like this, where you can have the undiluted truth from the convener of this program. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. To you be glory, O God. To you be honor, O God. To you be adoration, O God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the man of God. Thank you, Lord, for the convener of GCK, who is also carrying the ministers along for the ministers' conference, for the church workers' conference, and for the professional conference. Look at how he's bringing things together to be able to make everyone to be fully what is supposed to be, to be matured, to be prepared, and to be made available for the service of God. Let's bless the Lord. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. Brethren, let's pray for more grace for the man of God. Let's pray for more power. Let's pray for more, for renewed strength. That his, his strength will not fail. No, as his days, so will his strength be. The Lord will continue to increase him on daily basis. The Lord will continue to envision him on daily basis. New revelation, new anointing, new power, new unction, and his word will not fall to the ground. Let's continue to pray for the man of God. More than we have ever seen, we shall see again. More than we have ever seen, the Lord's name will be glorified. Oh, let's bless God. Let's hand over the man of God unto him, that the Lord will use him more, more, more. Lord, we just hand over the man of God unto you. The Lord will protect him. The Lord will watch over him. The Lord will not leave him alone. No evil will befall him. No evil will befall our mother in the Lord. The Lord will be with them both in the name of Jesus. And the scripture says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. No harm, no evil, no sorrow will befall them. The Lord will give him long life and the Lord will strengthen him on daily basis. Let's pray. Let's pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We started this program on Friday, and the Lord was mighty among us to minister unto all. We want to pray that today will be another day. Today will be a better day. Today will be a greater day. And let us pray. This is the beginning of another month, brethren. I said, this is the beginning of another month. We want to pray, oh God, give me a new thing. Not the old one, a new thing. Let's pray for a new thing, a new thing from the presence of the Lord. New thing, new strength, new vigor, new understanding, new vision. Let's pray for a new thing because the man of God will be coming with a message from the throne of high. We want to pray as this day is the beginning of a new month. Let my life and my ministry be new from today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let it be new. Let it be glorious. Let it be wonderful. Let the Lord move mightily among us. And 
pray to God for yourself. Oh God, make this month a new month for me. Make this month a month of rejoicing and thanksgiving. Let's, let's pray. Let new things happen to you. Let all that will be happening to you now be to God's glory. Glorify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are presenting ourselves unto you. Thanking you for all you have done for us. Appreciating you for all you have done for us. And we are praying and asking that, O oh God of oh heaven, you that have been so good to us, as we are starting this new month, it shall be wonderful. It shall be glorious. It shall not, we shall not remain the same. And new, new things will begin to happen in our lives, in our ministry, and in all that we lay our hands to do. And your name will be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Please may we rise on our feet as we worship God together this morning. We've come to the sanctuary of God this morning. We want to worship him with the whole of your heart. You want to say thank you, Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me, for saving me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, oh, of the Lord, and all He has done. Oh, Lord. 